of truth unto us today. Uh, reveal it to, unto us by your Holy Spirit. Help us to speak according to your Holy Spirit and think according to your Spirit of God. In Jesus' my name, reveal your truth unto us when we read your word. In Jesus' mighty name, and we just praise you and we just know that there is hope in you. There is healing in you. There is deliverance in you. In Jesus' name, strengthen us in our faith as well. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so here's uh, Matthew 10. Uh, let's read from verse 1. And when he had called his twelve disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases. Amen. So he gave us power. God gave us, the disciples, those who are following God, power to cast out all kinds of demons and to heal all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of disease. So there's no diseases that God cannot heal. Okay, everything is, all things have been healed before and done before and be able to be healed, whatever that is. So, you know, God is our healer, you know. Amen. Amen. And then God's like revealing this word to you, Shane, because uh, he's telling I'm the healer, you know. Just tell him to, tell him to seek him, you know. He's, he's the one, you know. And, and you know, we are, we're here to help you out as well. So, um. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this this is like a confirmation to you because why would it start up with healing, right? Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. First Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip, and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Lebas, whose surname was Thaddeus. Simon the Canaanite and Judas Iscariot who also betrayed him. So there are like 12 disciples' names. These 12, 12 Jesus sent out and commanded them saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles and do not enter the city of the Samaritans, but r go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belts, nor bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor staffs. For a worker is worthy of his food. Amen. What you can find here is God saying, freely you have received, freely give. You know, um... Don't, don't don't charge money for it. Don't, uh, you know, ask for stuff, you know. Whatever you receive freely, freely cast out demons, heal the sick, you know. And cleanse the repers, raise the dead. And, and preach what first? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. God's kingdom is, is, is at hand. And, and you show the kingdom is at hand by healing the sick and delivering the people and all this kind of st things, you know. Yeah. If you're a true disciple of God, God will give you these powers so that you, you can uh, demonstrate the power of God unto people. You know, so I ask God, make me your disciple and give me this power to, to do all these things. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. It's amazing. It's amazing. Also, you know, where he says, freely you have received, freely give. So it's another way that we can use discernment when we're looking at, you know, a lot of these popular preachers in this day, and and uh, essentially people when when focus seems to be totally on money, and you know where people where they if to to show up they they charge a fee like there's there's a there, there's a lot of them out there you really have to. To, 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 to be diligent. You can't, there's false preachers out there, and uh, right there in the Word of God, it, it, it's showing that, uh, that that's against God's will when, when people do things that way. So, freely you have received, freely give. Amen. Amen, amen. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, yeah, there are some uh, preachers that that do sell stuff and you know trying to gain money 
I mean, why would you need to sell the gospel? Well, you, they have received the knowledge freely, gave the knowledge freely as well. You know, and the power of God that there are people who charge money for casting out demons and stuff. I mean, this is wrong. I mean, yeah, you can ask for an offering, but but you cannot charge them. Hey, you should give this much money, that much money. You know, that's that's up to them. That's up to the person. But yeah, I also have this against Christians who hold the money too cheaply against the uh, the ministers of God and not give as well. You know, there there's also the other extreme where yeah. people don't like to give their tithes and offerings unto the Lord, and God said to give. You know. So, and the, the more you give, the more you're blessed. So on the other hand, we cannot, you know, let go of the other side. It's, it's the people, the preachers are, you know, trying to ask the money from people because their lack of it, obviously, because the people don't give, you yeah. know? <laughs> so, so that's the other hand. And back in the day, if you go, want to go to the days of Acts, the first church days, people gave unto God all their possessions. You know, they laid it onto the feet of the apostles' feet, and then the apostles, with their money, distributed them equally to them. So there was no lacking among them. Nobody was like short of anything. No food. No no clothing. No shelter. They're they're not short of anything. They just freely gave, 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 because you know they were just inspired by God, you know, to do that stuff, and they're blessed. The more you give, the more you're blessed. And I, and I noticed that in my life, like, uh, <clears throat> I gave, gave, gave in the beginning. And for the first one, two, three years, I didn't see much happening. But after that, God just started pouring out His blessing, 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 and, you know, I got nothing lacking at all. I mean, I always had really uh, nothing lacking, but, but now it's just more abundantly, you know? And I just want you guys to also experience this by giving. And at first, when you plant a tree, like, uh, let's say you plant a seed, of an apple tree, you're not gonna get apple the next year. It takes apple tree to grow like one, two, three years, and then when it starts bearing fruit, it bears bears fruit, right? And the second, and then the the more time goes on, the apple tree gets bigger and bigger, bigger, and gets bears more apples, more apples, more apples, right? Mm -hmm. Just like that, the the when you first give unto the Lord, you don't see much happening because you just sow seeds right now. I mean, you need to water them, you need to make them grow. And, and then, when they grow, 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 and they bear fruit, that's where you're going to start reaping. So don't, 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 uh, don't give up in the giving. Many people, I'll say, they, they gave a tithe maybe one time, and they, oh, I don't receive anything the next week. So I'm not going to give. Well, that's, that's your faith. You know, the, the faith, you need to persist in the faith, and then, you know, persist on it, and then believe on the Lord to receive something. It's not like God's not going to give you something, you know, and, uh, um, like, like almost like right away, you need to persist in the faith. And when you persist and fight the battle of faith to receive certain things, like let's say it be for healing, for any kind of thing, you gotta cry out to Jesus all the more. And that's where Jesus like gives you totally something that that He promised, you know, that unto you, and that, that you have been pursuing through. Uh, in order for me to receive the the wife. Uh, I pray for about three months, and then the last week, I kind of like, you know, cried unto God. I like, God, you know, you gave it to this person, that person, where is mine, you know? And then I kind of like uh, pushed it through unto the Lord, and that's where God gave, you know? So so just like these people who cry unto Jesus Christ, and that they receive the miracle, you also have to cry unto Jesus Christ, you know? Many people receive their, their miracles like that in the Bible. You know, whether they, they cried like a dove, you know, like Hezekiah cried like a dove, and, and 15 years was added unto him. The people, uh, he, the, he was going to be dying soon, and God added 15 years to his life. You know, so, you know, no matter what the people say, it doesn't matter. What God, it matters what God says. So he cried, 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 and God added in 15 years more to his life. And so on, and all these other people who couldn't have children. This, this Rebecca, she cried bitterly unto the Lord. And the Lord answered and said, because, you know, God, God has heard your cry, the, the prophet said, or was the priest said, God has heard your cry, go home and be rejoicing, because for the Lord has heard your cry. And then, and then you know, she, she received a child like that. 
where she was barren, couldn't get any children, you know? So just like things like that, you got to see how people receive their miracle. This blind people, they cried out unto Jesus Christ. They, they looked for Jesus Christ all day long. And to, when, they, when they found him after several days of seeking, most likely, because it was hard to find Jesus. And it is hard to find Jesus. It's not that easy to find Jesus Christ. You got to really pursue and find him and go get him. You know, it's not like you can find Jesus that easily, you know. To, to, in order to, to receive from God, you go and look for Him, look for Him, look for Him, find Him, and, and that's where you'll find Him. It's just because it's not that, that, that you just made one prayer, oh God, please heal. It's just not that God's going to heal. you got to go seek and find, seek and find, and knock and knock and knock until He opens it to you. And it will be open. It surely is going to open. Surely the, 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 the healing is going to come through, and because God, God can heal. God, God is a healer. I mean, He can heal anything. It's not God's will that, that you die early. It's God's will for you to heal. But are you, you know, willing to sacrifice the time to go find Him just like these people who have received their miracles? Are you going to, you know, pers be persistent in it? You know, that, that's what God is looking for. And when you do, hey, God's going to do His part for sure. So you, when you pray, you know God's going to answer already. It's just that are you going to push enough? to get there you know are you gonna you know, strive enough to to enter that blessing you know yeah. mm -hmm. it's to pray and pray and pray he says here the first thing that uh, uh, Jesus gave them was the power over uh, demons and, 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 and to cast out demons he gave them the power over unclean spirits and the power and then the power to heal the sick. And and so so you have to believe in the power that that, that Jesus says you have, you know. And 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 so so you have to just be persistent in faith and just know. You like speak those things that be not as though they are, you know. And and and, and, and God is faithful. Yeah, I, I I watched this uh, true true story about this man who was escaped from from uh from Russia, and then he was like in the middle of like Iceland, you know I guess maybe like around Antarctica or something. He's crossing there, escaping from Russia to go to Germany, back to Germany, and you know in the middle of he has nothing to eat. Literally, he's in the ice fields. What does he have? Nothing to eat. So he just cries unto God, God. Give us this day our daily bread. You know, he cries unto God, right? And then uh, he sees like a little seal running away. You know, and he starts running after it. He starts running after it. He has one bullet on his gun. You know, he has a gun. And he has one bullet on his gun. He's running after the seal. And the seal is running away from him, trying to go into the water. And then as, as he's about to go jump into the water, he, he just shoots. He just shoots the gun, right? And then it hits the seal, and then he's able to, you know, cook the seal and, you know, use the seal's uh, um, oil to, to wrap his feet around because his feet is, like, super cold and icy. So, yeah, I mean, and, and, and yeah, God gives. You know, you cry out to God, God will give you. And then what he had to do, he had to run after the seal. He had to, when he saw that opportunity, he had to go grab it and, 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 and shoot the bullet in face. He had one bullet, and it hit it from far away. You know? Amen. Amen. So it's, it's amazing how, uh, like, hunger will drive you. And, and it, 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 it's amazing what, how, how powerful people um, can be in that pinch when they really, really want it. You hear these stories about how, um, like, people who have, you know, lifted cars off of other people, you know, big, huge, you know, two-ton car or something <laughs> off of other people because they get just this supernatural strength because what's in them, right, it, at that very moment, you know, is just this, you know, intense drive, you know. I, I bet if he was well fed that day, he wouldn't have been as determined to kill that or or to uh or to uh, you know to go after that field you know but um 
in, in, in that way, we have to have that desire, that drive, that hunger in us all the time. And, and, and we will get what we ask for, you know. Yeah, I bet the angels were helping the person who were lifting up the two-ton car. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And the angel was helping him that day, too, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, the, the seal was given unto him because he cried out. Yeah. And he was able to live on and eat the seal and go on and, and be escaped back to Germany. Yeah. yeah. Um... Yeah, it's like the I think the movie title is "As Far as My Feet Can Go" or something like that. You know, so it was a German movie, but uh, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, let's let's go ahead and read um, verse eleven. Eleven. Thank you. Now, whatever city or town you enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and stay there till you go out. Hmm. Inquire who it, who in it is worthy, huh? That's kind of interesting. I never saw that part. Really, no, right? <laughs> yeah. So ask somebody who's who's really worthy to to stay into their house, right? And stay with them, right? Stay there till you go out. And when you go into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it's not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive your, you nor hear your words, when you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Wow. What do you guys think? Wow. I've always wondered what the part, uh, I've read that before, as far as um, where he says, go into the house, and then he says, uh, uh, let your peace return to you. If they want to see it, let it return to you. How have you, deter uh, how have you um, interpreted that? Um. Um, I'll, I'll kind of like interpret it as say, um, if they don't receive the gospel, then then let them let the peace return to you. So so when you bring the peace unto them, they they might pr feel the presence of God and the peace of God, right? And the warmth and the the love of God coming to them, right? Mm -hmm. So so they might feel it, but they might not really acknowledge it. You know, they might not acknowledge it. And they might sternly say. Oh, we don't need to hear this. Oh, go away. Mm -hmm. Then draw that back so that they may know, you know, the peace is gone from them and that, that, that the joy is gone from them, right? Yeah. That they may know that, oh, maybe there is God. Maybe I'm, I'm cursed by, by doing this, you know? And maybe, you know, can, they might turn around. I? Okay, so what we're saying here is, you know, um, God is looking for people that are worthy, you know, in a way that they're humble enough to receive us, right? Good enough to receive us, because who's going to receive you into their house except the people who are generous, except the people who are humble, who are willing to learn or listen to somebody, right? Whose yeah. ears are open and whose heart is open, whose, uh, whose attitude is, is humble in a way. And these people will receive you and receive the gospel because God resists the proud but gives grace unto the humble, right? So, so these people who are worthy, it's not necessarily that they're rich or, or super good or whatever. It's these people who are, who are humble to receive you and to, to, to worship the Lord. And, you know. That, that reminds me kind of of those where he says in the scripture, do not cast your pearls before swine lest they uh, trample them underfoot and turn and attack you. It kind of brings it all together. So I, I, I he, he doesn't want you to waste pretty much your time and your energy um, on people who will not, and not that they cannot receive you. So I, I, I understand. Okay, I understand. <laughs> wow, okay. Yeah, yeah and yeah, don't argue with people who keep on want to argue and keep on want to fight even though you bring them the truth of the gospel, of the word of God, and they don't want to listen to you. Don't waste your pearls. Why do you want to 
why do you want to fight with something that they don't agree with or yeah, yeah don't so don't no need to fight just leave them alone and and go your way because why do you want to lose your peace let the peace return it to you <laughs> you know Amen. let your peace return to you so you don't go oh man that guy was so fighting against me no 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 just let your peace return to you and go your move on your way even shake off the dust that means shake off anything that 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 might have gotten on to you because of them yeah. because of their rejection because of you know you don't take their heart in you if they reject you, you shake off that the rejection off of you and like oh you know if they don't want to believe in the lord you know we got to go on move on and preach unto the other people who will receive you know it's like don't don't take anything from them don't take any um dust that they have thrown at you you know <laughs> yeah, yeah you Shake it off. Even the dust with soil on your feet, huh? <laughs> yeah, wow. <It's> <laughs> yeah. yeah, amen. Thank you, Jesus. You know, it's like it's like he's like, don't worry about those people. Just just move on, because that day, they their judgment would be much more worse than Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment, and we're all gonna be judged once. So, you know, no hold. Don't hold any grudges against them because they rejected your. And because if they reject you, they rejected Jesus. You know? Amen. Uh, verse 15. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Amen. You know, be wise as serpents, meaning be as smart as a devil. Because the devil will play tricks and, you know, try to deceive you and things like that. And, and you are like sheep among the wolves. They're wolves. Wolves trying to eat you and, and, and kill you and destroy you. So you have to be wise. Be smart. Know, know that they're going to try to destroy you if they're wolves. Right? Yeah. And, and, and they're, they're, they're going to be cunning as the serpents. So be careful. Be, be discerning. You know, don't just trust everybody. Just, just watch out. Jesus saying, be smart. Be wise. Don't be like, oh, non casual oh, like, here and go, here you go, like, you know, like, you know, not thinking people, but be thinking, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus is saying this to us, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Don't, don't be harmful. Instead, he's like, I'm, he's, God is saying, I'm not telling you to be like the devil, you know, to bite them like a serpent, but be harmless as doves. Doves cannot harm you in any way. So be as harmless as doves. But be as smart as a devil because they will try to trick you to kill you. Okay, so we Christians cannot bear the serpent's fangs, okay? We shouldn't have any fangs of the devil giving other people poison, poisoning them with the, our words. We, we shouldn't be doing that. But we should just be smart as the serpents and just, you know, maneuver away from them. Okay? That's one of my favorite parts of, of, of the scripture. Because he's, he's preparing you. He, he's saying you're going to have to be prepared for this world and you are going to have face opposition. You are going to deal with wolves. So he was preparing people to be smart about it. A lot of people kind of try to be one extreme or the other, like so innocent, you know, that they're ignorant to, to the ways of the world and, and ignorant to the ways of evil men. And, and, but, but, um, and right there, that's, that's Jesus telling us that, you know, out here, ignorance is not an option, you know, and, 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 and so that, I just love that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, like snakes, for example, when they're threatened, if they think that the enemy is so much stronger than them, what they do is they run away like crazy fast. Okay. We, we also have to learn from that, that if they're, trying to catch us and take us into jail and whatnot, we gotta run away. You know, mm -hmm. don't don't be stupid and fight them and you know, run away. <laughs> you know, run away, right? Be it says in verse seventeen here, but beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues, right? They're gonna beat you, they're gonna take you into jail. I mean run away from them. Beware of the men. Okay, don't trust everybody. They, they're going to probably try to persecute you. So from the persecution, if you can run away, run away. Right? I mean, if you get caught, I mean, oh well. But if you can run away, <laughs> run away from them. 
don't be don't be just yeah. like fighting them all the way till you go to jail. No. You know? Isn't it really interesting there that he, he said he said he was in the in the synagogues that we should not only be a, a holy place, right? Yeah. So he was telling them, you know, uh, you know, this is where, you know, the danger lies. And that is where it was in that day and age. You know. So I think it's still maybe in in a way it still exists that kind of uh it exists today, you know. Jesus was kind of a re- revolutionary person, you know. He came and he and he and he was telling people things that they would never hear from, you know, their their their, uh, their rabbis or teachers, you know. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah. And verse eighteen says, "You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake." as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you would speak. For it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. Amen. Now brother will deliver a brother to death, and the father his child. And children will rise up against parents, and cause them to be put to death. Wow. This is going to happen in the end days, you know. Brother, brothers will persecute brothers, father, his child. Children will rise up against their parents. And cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in this city, flee to another. See, he says, flee to another. If they're trying to persecute you, catch you, kill you, run mm-hmm. away. Run away. For surely I say to you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. And you will be able to run away if you, if you continue to pray and ask God to send His angels to make you be able to escape that time. God will enable you to escape miraculously if you believe in the Lord. Jesus escaped the crowd miraculously. He just walked through them. Mm-hmm. Does he just walked through the crowd you know like when, when they're trying to stone him to death they're trying to push him off the cliff he just walked through them like nothing and he disappeared you know God's h- angels can hide you God can hide you you know he can deliver take you out I heard this preacher who was running away from these communist Chinese they're trying to capture him after they they're he's just holding a service and then they, they have an alert that these communist soldiers are coming in to capture him. So he just jump out the window three stories high onto the ground and he run away and you know uh and then he just leap over this eighteen foot wall. That's impossible for somebody to jump over. He jumps over and then he said he said when he's jumping over something pushed Pushed from underneath and pushed him over the wall. Angel. The angel of God, yeah. Pushed yeah. him over the wall, 18 foot high. Come on, nobody can jump that high. It doesn't make amazing. sense. Amen. Yeah. And that, that goes to tell you right now, like we were talking about earlier, as far as you know, prayer and being in that moment of complete, uh, with, you know, you're driven. When he was when he was running toward that 18 foot wall, he was absolutely 100 percent driven. You know, with 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 his own, you know, with the idea of 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 of, of, of escaping, and, um, and 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 he did, and and God kicked in at that very moment, in that moment of desperation, you know, because yeah, that's an impossibility to scale. <laughs> yeah, and then and then the more amazing thing is he he walked out of the jail with his broken legs uncaught by the people he was like you know they they broke his legs in the jail you know mm-hmm. broke his arms and like his body basically because they beat him and then you know they just broke him you know right mm-hmm. and then you know he's screaming in pain and of course he's in the jail cell right and then and he's praying god please take me out of here take me out of here he's praying like that right mm-hmm. and then um god says get out of the place you know right mm-hmm. he's like and he he walks out and he forgets he forgets that his legs are broken, you yeah. know. And then he walks out, and then he walks out with his legs and his legs are totally healed, you know. And he's <laughs> walking out, 
And then he's passing by these jail guards, and the jail guards just walking by him as he as the jail guards cannot see him. And he's walking out, and then these doors are just opening by itself. They just they just open. They just open all these 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 locked doors, these electric doors. They're just open by themselves, and they just open, open, open. And then he walks out the place, and he takes a cab and gets out of there. And he says, and he has no money to 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 get off the cab, so he says, take the cab to his place, and they they pay for the cab and everything. And they're just amazed how he escaped from the most hardcore jail cell in China. That's a book of good Lord. It reminds me of, of, of uh, in the Bible where Paul was in jail and the angels came in and did, no, the doors were, all the doors were unlocked and he just simply walked out. They were singing at the midnight hour. And <laughs> it's the power of God. Amen. 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 Yeah, it's this book called The Heavenly Man. Uh, I believe it's a true story. It's just so amazing. I couldn't let go of reading that. I, I read it all throughout the night and day, you know. I think I read it I in two days. I know that your wife also read it. Yeah, it's like 300 pages book, but it's very, very good. It's very mm -hmm. inspiring, you you know. Mm -hmm. And then you, you when you read it, you're like, oh, I'm so lukewarm after reading that because he's like memorizing the Bible. Like, he's memorizing the whole Matthew and everything. And he's preaching the gospel everywhere. He's getting persecuted. I mean, we are like having it so easy over here, you know. Mm. So, anyway, uh, let's yeah continue on reading. Uh, okay, verse twenty-four. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If they had called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call those of his household? Therefore do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. Don't, just because you're casting out demons, healing the sick, people might call you Antichrist. People will call you, oh, you're you're doing that by the power of demons, and you're not of God, you're a cult, you're a cult, you're a cult, you know? Oh, you speak in tongues, you're a cult, you know, all this kind of like treacherous things people will call you. But Jesus is saying here, do not fear men, do not fear them, or, or take care of the, take, take a little care of those things because, you know, there will be nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. So they say you, you're 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 um the the guilt that they are putting on you, the the pressure that they're putting on you, all things all the truth will be revealed. And if you're really truly serving the Lord, the truth will be revealed one day that this guy is not, you know, a cult. This guy is not against the Lord. This guy is for the Lord. This guy is truly man of God. Things will be known or revealed to them, you know. So don't worry about. Whether men persecute you, you know, or, or something like that, you know, don't 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 be afraid of what men's opinion of you will be. Like because I've been talking about, hey, once save, always save is false, you know. And a lot of people persecute me. This they, they even say I'm gonna unsubscribe. Oh, I'm I'm unsubscribing from you because you believe this. It's mm -hmm. like fine, you know. Like I don't look for men's approval. I look for God's approval. I don't care what they think of me. They discard me. Doesn't matter to me. What matters is what. how does God view me? How does God think of me? Am I His true servant? He knows. Am I speaking the truth? He knows. Why do I have to care about other people's opinion or whatever? I don't Thank care. And, yeah. and it's, it's true to be able to speak the truth of God and of course people won't like it. He's saying, of course people won't like it at all when you, when you speak the truth and it, and, and, it, it, and it convicts them. But it's the truth in love, you know what I mean? And uh, so it, it, it's just a powerful thing. And it's like, um, once saved, always saved. Like, think about it. Like, God is telling you this is not true get through the whole Bible. Even when he delivered, you know, the Israelites out of, out of Egypt, you know, he parted the Red Sea for them. You know, he did so much for them. And, and, and once they, you know, had their freedom, did that stop them from sinning? Did that stop them from being condemned by, uh, by the things that they did? 
No, you know, it, it, it didn't. So, so, you know, you, you, you will face consequences if you continue in sin. And that is the most loving thing you could tell somebody, you know? I just, I just, the Bible just backs up what I say, you know? Just go ahead and read the Bible, you know, right? I mean, what does the Bible say? Cut off your hand if that makes you sin. For it's better for you to enter into heaven without that limb. And, and it is worse for you to go into hell with that limb that, that you're cutting off. It's better for you to go into heaven uh, with no eyes than to have those eyes and to be thrown into the hellfire. Right? Is that, am I, am I, is that, is that, does that mean? It says, what, what does also, another verse say, you know? Not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord, Master, Master, you know, will enter the kingdom of God. But those who do the will of God, they will enter the kingdom of God. There's so many verses like that. I mean, like, I'm not even, you know, speaking out of my own, you know, I can just read you the Bible and those Bible verses alone tell what I tell. And, and, and yeah. the disconnect comes, I don't think, because of the scripture, and everybody thinks they're reading the truth. The disconnect comes... I think where um, where it's it's what's being taught behind the, the cues, you know, where, where these people are being preached to, um, you know, that that you know, just accepting Jesus is is the end of the story, you know. Well, it's not because. You have to strive for 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 his spirit to become like him. You know what I mean? Just and then you'll be able. You know, you'll be able to do the good things of God. You know, it, it's just this. It, it, there's a work. If there's no instant answers, it's not. You know what I mean? There's no microwave. You, you like to call it microwave fasting. You there's. You know, it's just. I don't get it. I, I just don't yeah. Get it. The Bible just says, you know, plainly, without holy holiness, no man shall see God. No man shall see God. Is it my words? No, it's the Bible words. It's so clear, crisp and clear that God will God will reward to those you know who do good, eternal life, and to those who commit uh, indign uh, commit <laughs> bad things, indignation and wrath is waiting for them in the day of judgment. And there will be many people who are going to be weeping and gnashing teeth because they believe in Jesus, yet they are in hell. Why? Because they never turned their wicked ways and, and they never pursued the holiness of God. They never many, pursued righteousness. Many, many people think that one safe, forever safe is true. Yeah, many people believe that. Uh -huh. yeah. And they think, oh, well, I'm just going to heaven just because... I believe, but even the devil believes and trembles, the Bible says, your faith is justified by your works. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you, have, if you say you have faith, your, your works must follow. Faith, you know, means being faithful unto God's word. Yeah. Faithful means full of faith, you know. It just, it just, it just goes according to, and if you have that, have that belief when you read the Bible you have no problem with the verses that Jesus says yeah you have no problem yeah amen okay um let's go to verse 27 whatever I tell you in the dark speak in the light yeah I heard that Jesus tell me to teach these things and I speak in the light and what you hear in the ear preach on the housetops and do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. This is God. Fear God. Do not fear men, because they, they can only kill the body, but cannot kill your soul. But fear God who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two spirits sold for a copper coin? Are not one of them fall to the ground apart from your father's will and and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will unless your father wills you to die you will not die but if father wills you to die you will die you know god has full control even mm -hmm. a sparrow even a sparrow that does not 
is, is sold for a copper coin, which is that cheap, you know. Not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. That means unless God says, okay, die, then you will die. Okay, if father says you will live, then you will live, right? No man, if they say you got two months to live, you know, no man can say that, you know, over God's, God's words has a final word. If God says, oh no, this guy's going to live 10 more years. Amen. Then you're going to live 10 more years. Amen. Okay. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Even the hair of your head is numbered. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 100, 100 thousands. All of them are numbered. And not even of that hair will fall out of your head. Unless it is will by the Father says, okay, fall, then fall. God is that much immaculate and very caring, even the tiny little detail. So trust in the Lord and fear God who is able to throw you into hell and to make you live and to make you die. Who's, who's, you know, who's able to control everything of your life. So fear Him, serve Him, love Him. I mean, the best wisdom is to love God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And, and it's, it's, it's interesting there where he says, um, do not fear men, but fear God. And, and uh, it's like, it, 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 because God is, you know, he, he, he has, only he does, like he said, he, he, he has the power to save your soul or, or, or not, or to save your life or not. You know, men don't have that kind of power. And he, it's almost like he's saying, I want you to respect God's word because God does not lie, you know. So so I don't think he wants us to have like an unhealthy uh, type fear because that comes from, from the enemy. But a healthy fear is believing in the word of God and believing that it is true where he says, there's consequences to sin, you know? Yeah, and Jesus yeah. clearly says here, fear him who's able to both destroy soul and body and who's able to throw you into hell. Fear him and do not sin. If he says, don't do this, don't do it. Fear him. Because he's going to be able to throw you into hell. Fear him. Don't, you know, fear anything else. But him, you should fear. That's what he's saying. Amen. And it's, it's amazing. He goes at the end, the very end of that, he says, you're more valuable. You are more valuable than many sparrows. Mm -hmm. And that's how, how God views us. He's kind of the hairs on our head. And we're more valuable than many sparrows. Mm -hmm. It almost brings us back to earlier in, in Matthew when we were reading about the, the, the legion of, of, of demons that went into a whole herd of, of pigs. And how many how many is a legion? What's the number? Thousand, right? All right. So imagine, right? Just imagine, for example, 1,000 pigs, you know, are in a herd. But all of them were lost to save, you know, this one or two men. It, 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 it's so amazing how God, how much God cares for us. Uh-huh. You know? I mean, it just, it brought me back to the where everybody's trying to learn more about that uh, story. Why did, you, why did God send the demon, uh, you know, the demon into the pigs? But I, I, I just put those two together. I don't know if anybody's ever thought of that before, but it's, it, it's like he values you. He's counted the hairs on your head. Amazing. Mm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes, says, do not fear, therefore you are more valued than any sparrows, than many sparrows. So, don't be afraid of dying and stuff like that. Just yeah. fear the Lord and don't fear men, people, consequences, whatever. Okay? That's what Jesus is saying. Amen. And confess Christ before men. Therefore, whoever confesses me before <laughs> men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Christ uh, brings division. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. 
Can can somebody uh, mute their mic? It's like ringing, kind of. Oh. Yeah. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I've come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemy enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. This is this is what Jesus is saying. He's not. I'm, I didn't come here to bring you peace, but to for you to bring a spiritual battle in your own home, because they'll be all divided against you because you're following God. When you're following God, they don't want you to follow God. Not that crazily. They don't. They don't want you to uh, go after Jesus Christ because now you're preaching the word of God to them. They don't want to hear it because they're in darkness. They love the darkness. They're grabbing into the darkness, and you're preaching the truth, and the truth is hurting them. So they they want to they want to hate you. They fight you. They they don't like you. So then you become what? Not a peacemaker in the home, but actually you become a destruction destructive force in them in their life. So that's why they hate you. And they don't want you to be a good Christian. They don't want you to go to church. They don't want you to pray. They'll hinder you. They'll they'll they don't fight want you against to go you. To heaven. Yeah. So so don't think that Jesus came to bring peace on earth, but a sword to fight the spiritual battle. Mm -hmm. Right. Amen. Amen. And it, it just shows you that the the attitude that He wants us to have. He wants us, He did not come to bring to to bring us you know this this to lull us to sleep and, and, and treat us like um uh like you know we 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 are powerless you know he wanted to empower us against the enemy of this world and and that was the greatest gift that he could give us because in that that's our life and so when he was saying, you know, he's gonna whole households, you know, you're gonna be divided. He was telling, he was, he was telling the truth, you know, whole households, whole whole countries are even even, you know, and, and divided. And you know, you know why but, why it's divided? It's yeah. because they are the the other members that are unbelievers. Their life is dictated by the demons. Oh, yeah. Demons are in them, on them taking control of their life so they get you against you you know mm -hmm. so they get you mad against you angry against you not listening to you there are, there are many cases when I go out and evangelize outside many cases these people have demons in them I feel them too you know by the way if I tell them Jesus they go like don't talk to me you know they're like they're like pushing on no no I don't believe that get away from me like like this and we know it's a demons talking mm -hmm. through their mouth and they're not necessarily have thousands of demons in them. They might have two, three, five, ten. We don't know, but they're somewhat possessed, for sure, because we feel demons from them. The presence of demons that are just around them. And 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 they know, like it, the, the demons know that Jesus has the power to destroy them, and that's what they're fighting against. You know, when they're telling you to stay away, it's that demon that sees the power. Jesus Christ to destroy them. Yeah. yeah, you don't have to be um if you don't have to be put I mean you, if you're if you're going crazy with demons in the demon possession, that means thousands of demons in you, like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of demons in you. That's why you're Are there that much demons, so many. In, in a possessed person like that crazy people who is cutting themselves, right? Mm -hmm. And screaming yeah. like howls and then you know, you you normally would say, "Oh, that person's just insane," but in yeah. fact, that person is filled with thousands of demons. That means if there's only few demons in you, it's yeah. hard to notice that. Yeah. It's going to be very hard to notice the symptoms yeah. of them. They might all of a sudden get angry at you and yell at you out of nowhere and curse at you because yeah. they have few demons, not like 
hundreds yeah. and hundreds of demons. They might go yeah. and commit adultery and all these fornication and, and lying and, and deceitful and gossiping and stuff like that because they have few demons, not thousands. Oh, yeah. Okay, do you understand that? So, yeah. so you know when the, the sin is manifesting, you know the demons are there, right there with them. Yeah. Okay? When they hate you, when, they are, when they're putting the middle finger at you because you're preaching the gospel, which happened to me. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I saw it, like, like I just hold up a sign that says Jesus is real, and this woman that passed by read it and put a middle finger on my face. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, come on, these people are totally demon-possessed. Not with probably thousands, but probably at least few of them. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's why they hate the gospel. I mean, what's the point? Like, what's, what, why do they do that for? You know? Right? What's the point of, of if they don't agree with it, then they don't, they don't, they could just not look at me. Right? right? Or or they could just no, that's not true. You know, they could say that. You know, it's their opinion. But if they put a middle finger on me, that means they are really totally against it. That means the demons are in them to be, to even bring that kind of hatred. Right? Right. So so you know, you know, you they you don't have to be possessed with thousands of demons to, to go to to, yeah, to be angry. Only a so. few yeah. can make you possessed. Exactly. Uh -huh. right. And it, it's really, it's really amazing how he was talking about, you know, different, you know, different. You might be alienated from mother and father, but he also, also said that when you believe in Jesus, you know, believers become your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, they're your family. You know, it, it, and and. And you, they become your family. You know, God is your family. He is your father. So you, even though you might, you know, like a lot of us, you know, we, we go to church and then we come home to these divide, these very divided households where people are telling you you're dreaming and 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 they don't want to hear you pray and they tell you to get away from them and and but um but and it's so difficult and I know a lot of people are dealing with it when it's your family. But it's so it but but even those situations, even those situations, you know, you if you continue to pray, um, God can even bring your family, you know, family out of that out of that darkness. Uh huh. Amen. Yeah. Uh, also, verse forty says, "He who receives you receives me." And he who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of water, uh, only a cup of cold water, in the name of a disciple, uh, surely I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. So he who receives you will receive rewards. If they if they agree with your teaching, if they if they receive you as a man of God or woman of God, they are receiving their reward. You know, and it will not be turned away from them. So, so just know that when we receive uh, prophets of God or man of God, woman of God, if we receive their teaching, preaching, then we're re receiving their reward. That's what. Bible says right here, you'll receive the prophet's reward if you receive a prophet. If you receive a righteous man, you know, in the name of righteous man, you'll receive a righteous man reward. Amen? So receive those people and, and know that you're being, you know, receiving a reward because you received those, these men of God. Amen? Who's doing the will of God. Of course, there are bad, bad men of God who, who preach the word of God and do bad things. Um. Yeah, just just uh, just don't judge them. Just leave them alone. Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah, God will deal with their, God will deal with His own servants. So you just ask, you just pray unto God for them. Okay. Right, and and, it, and it's so true, and it, it's amazing how like um that that there Jesus is pretty much saying you know anybody that receives you receives me. It just shows. How um, he he is he sees himself and he you know he's God and then there's us his disciples or his his disciples and at that point you, Jesus 
it's a part of you. So if someone, of course, harmed one of them, they would also be harming God. You know, they'd also be harming Jesus. And 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 he was so serious about that. You know, one of my favorite parts in the Bible is when when when, when Jesus told told um, Saul at that time, stop. You know, Saul was persecuting persecuting the Christians, and he said, why are you persecuting me? And so you can take comfort when you are, you know, saying the word of God to somebody. You can take comfort. Yeah, God is with me. He considers himself a part of me, you know. And, and in that way, he's your strength in that time of persecution. Amen, amen. Yep. Amen, amen, hallelujah. All right, uh, well, yeah, th- thank you for for this word, God. Jesus Christ, please bless us. Help us to be the doers of the word. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you just for this uh, blessing. Let this bless many, many people. In Jesus' my name, I pray. Glory to God. All right, thank you, Kay. Uh, God bless you. Well, thank you so much, you